technique versus soul. So <laughs> technique versus truth. It's, 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 it's a weird balance, but you know, and that's why it's so important that you know yourself and you know where you like to feel things from because it's a balance. It's a balance that you have to find. I, I, I didn't have any technical training growing up. Uh, so I can't tell you all the technical terms that are used in sort of relaying music or, or talking um, music sheets and notes and things like that. And, you know, somebody told me the word melisma the other day. I didn't even know what that was. I, I just, you know, I, I do my thing and I feel my thing and it becomes what it is. And that's, that's, those are the kind of singers that I love. So if everybody went to the same vocal teacher and learned the same notes and how to sing so proper, like you're losing the truth in there. And that's why sometimes I don't like to be too over-rehearsed and whatnot going into a live show, or watch myself back and critique myself too hard is because it's so important for me to live in that moment and to feel my truth and to own it. People sometimes think that belting, is, you know, it, it, it means being a great technical singer and being able to hit certain notes and all of that. But to me, being boisterous and being able to belt and be loud in that way, but in a controlled way, if you want to sustain and hold out a note in the right key, on the right pitch, in the right tone that you're looking for, which are three different things that have to combine into one, it's something that comes from your gut. And it's something that you have to Start from here with your breath, centering yourself, knowing how to, you know, stand firm in your two feet. You know, there's a stance that happens when, you, when you're in the studio even, and I'm prepping up, and I know this big note is coming. Uh, when Whitney Houston sings, I will always love you. And I will always love you. And then she goes back into that belt like that, that takes power and that takes focus. It really does to stay on that note, to keep your power going. Um, and it's all, it's all a centering thing. It's mental, it's, it's all connected. You can't just sing from your head, you know, being in the like, oh, let me memorize the song and sing from there. It has to come from down here. Because, and it has to come from that place of feeling to exude the power that you need to, to if, if belting is your thing, to, to, to be a belter for anything that you sing, really, but belting is, is, is power, and, and it comes from the soul, and for me, it comes from my gut. Vibrato comes in all different shapes, sizes, and textures, and tones, and, uh, you know, to each their own on this one. Um, I'm not one to technically critique somebody's style of vibrato unless it's wavering and uneven but stylistically sometimes it's more of a quivery vibrato and I'm saying like that that's not always my form of vibrato I think whenever you're using almost a, a quiet toned vibrato it's it's setting a mood you're setting an environment and and almost putting your listener at ease say something is an example sometimes the silence is so you know almost real all of a sudden that it calls for attention because it's quiet. It's like, oh, wait, wait, what, what, what just happened? Um, that's why acapella is singing sometimes and, you know, um, songs that just demonstrate, you know, no music are, are very powerful. But it's always nice to round out anything with a beautiful finish, you know? And uh, as far as adding vibrato to an end of a note, um, I, think, I think it also makes the listener listen to the actual capability that you have as a singer. It's, it's an impressive quality for, for, for singers to be able to, to execute well. That's why long notes are, are, are tricky. You know, Celine does beautiful um, endings to her sustained notes. This lovely vibrato shit that just kind of naturally just comes so, it's so beautiful. She does, I, I love how Celine ends her her long sustained notes, uh, be beautiful vibrato there. I would say, listen to her. Um, you know, maybe you're holding out a note. Uh, a great example would be one that I gave yesterday with the with the Whitney thing. You know, it's it's an, and I will always love you. This one takes super power, yet control, yet restraint, yet 
you know, um, projection. So the and I straight note and I and then see at the end I had to sort of waver in my my vibrato to withhold that power. Um, we'll always. I mean, you're you're gonna run out of breath. Practice with that. I mean, it's really hard to to execute. You know, I mean, Whitney's one of the greatest, but you know. Practice with the greats and see see where you stand. <laughs> Cheers to Whitney for that and to giving us something great to challenge us all with. Slides. Slides is another vocal sort of technique. Um, and singers have asked, asked me this too, like how do you slide? And it's so hard for me to break it down because it's sort of... Um, it's sort of something I naturally feel, but I guess if I were to break it down, it's the whole beginning, the ah, it's, it's a gliding sustained note that just rides all the way up, right? To whatever, figure out what the top note you're trying to hit is. In that case, it's uh, what? Ah, so you know in your head, go to that place. You, that's where you want to end up. And... Um, in a starting sense, to me, it's a feeling. So I, I don't know, I don't even know what note that starts on, but to me, it just comes from a core sensibility of, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna slide up there and it's just gonna be a takeoff. It's like a, just a running, 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 catch your breath, get your stance. Ah! So that's kind of a slow ramp up. <laughs> I was a little unexpected there. So you want to maybe prepare yourself and decide before you ramp up, do I want to like, how much breath do I want to take in? Is it going to be a quick ramp up or is it going to be a slow ramp up? So figure out your takeoff approach. <laughs> and if you want to do an ad lib, I mean, that, that opening riff I do for Ain't No Other Man, I, I want to rehearse that. I want to make sure that all those intricate separated notes are accurate when I record that, that song. For sure. I don't want a sloppy ad lib, for sure. If you're going to do an ad lib, do it right. <laughs> you know, and sometimes even in my head when I'm recording, I want to break it down. That's the very like slow version. And sometimes you, I'll count it down when I'm recording, even on my note paper, when I have headphones and the whole thing, and, and I'll go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you know what I mean? I'll, I'll write down each note if I really want to like fine tune it. And in communicating with my engineer, who's the one, you know, uh, playing the music back for me in my headphones and whatnot, I, you know, in order, sometimes we're in our own heads, we know our own style and our, and our formats and, and what we want to do in our heads, but you have to be able to communicate that too. So to break it down for him, okay, punch me in on this note or this word. I have to be able to do it in a way where he understands. So I'll break it down into numbers just because accuracy is important to me when it comes to my recording. I, I will do a great take and then I'll be like, okay, let's do another one, let's see if I can beat it. So I'm always striving to, to be my best. Figuring out a harmony to a song is, is something that's sort of hard for me to explain and put in words. Um, you could go about it with, you know, the technical approach and aspect to it. You get into the lingo of using, you know, a third above the note, a fifth above the note. Those are different harmonies where you can go above the note or below the note. But it's a specific kind of a note that um, blends not in unison, because that would be an octave, but sort of blends in a harmonious way <laughs> that works with the existing notes. So it's two separate notes that just sound good together. Um, for me, the way I sort of um, figured out harmonies was just by listening to records, um, listening to the way you know singers would maybe stack a vocal, to a second verse or a chorus and you could hear how, oh, that note kind of 
goes above the main note, but it really works with uh, works with the whole song, and it sounds good, and it has a choir esque feel, and it's you know it feels uh, more full. And sometimes it's it's just playing around by yourself and figuring out. You know, in the in the car when I was was younger, um, I uh, I used to sing along with um, you know the radio and kind of sing along and figure out what a harmony was and play around with that idea. And, you know, you use your ear to hear just what sounds good. Um, and one of the songs I used to do that with um, at the time, growing up, Killing Me Softly and Lauryn Hill, Fuji's record, um, their version of it. Uh, and she went to, I remember she went to a place in the bridge where, or, or it was like some kind of a breakdown part where she did like sort of this ad lib. It was, oh, whoa, whoa, la, 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 whoa. And um, I remember I would um, harmonize with that all the time on the radio. And it, that's a tricky one because she goes through so many various different notes, but I would try to keep up. It was almost like, a, it, it's like a challenge. It's like a game in a way. I almost try to keep up with, uh, you know, figuring out what the harmony note is as each note begins to change. So whenever she would go, whoa, I'd go, whoa, 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 and then tr trickle down to wherever the rest of it was that, but you know, you kind of have to just sing along with something and practice. And I remember, don't get discouraged by people that don't know, by the way, because I remember my manager at the time, who I don't, I'm not sure had quite an ear for music, but he he was in the, in the front seat of the car. I was in the back seat. And I was like just singing quietly to myself to this this particular um, harmony note I'm talking about. This this ad lib in, in the song, and he turns <laughs> to, to the passenger seat of somebody, and he's like. Is she singing off key? And I was like, and she was like, no, I think she's harmonizing. So don't be turned off by people that just don't understand, or you know, because he was listening predominantly to the radio and and you know, thinking, oh my gosh, she's not singing the exact melody that's on the radio. No, I'm practicing for, <laughs> for other things. So you know, just don't don't let anybody kill your spirit or or steer you the wrong way just if they don't get it. You know, <laughs> just know that. Trust yourself.